Lots to cover tonight from the ridiculous to the stuff that hurts. And the stuff that hurts is when you lose such a prominent person in the community, not because of self-stature, but because of the work that she did. Sister Ann Keefe passed away this past weekend, and uh, tonight we have uh, two folks who are going to talk about her good work, uh, Tenny Gross and Cedric Huntley from uh, the community. Tenny, of course, who runs this, the Institute for the Study of uh, and Practice of Nonviolence, and Cedric, who is the director of the South uh, Providence Recreation Center, both of whom worked right with Sister Ann Keefe, who, by the way, will be uh, laid to rest on Friday of this week. In the meantime, welcome in. Thank you very much for joining the Dan York State of Mind, which is split because today was ridiculous. Let's go to that rundown. The only conversation that I could muster up and ring a phone on on WPRO weekdays noon to three was this. And it was just kind of interesting to sit back. By the way, there was a rumor we had that. And everything's okay. Deb Gist is in great shape, but if you read about her interest in another job, you'd think the Ed Commissioner had croaked. We'll talk about it seriously. It's like, what is going on around here? Uh, I did. I did tell you so. I was right then, and I'll tell you why I'm right now. Not that I'm here to tell you that I'm right all the time, but sometimes you got to call some folks out. All right, let's get into it and, uh, and not race through, but move through. The only conversation is about a deflated football or nearly dozen of them. This conversation needs no introduction, right? Here's the headline. Yup. And here's what CBS says about it. Now, the guy who broke this story from Indianapolis, Bob Kravitz, has now donned both the reporter's hat and the editorialist hat, as you can see from this piece. For um, underinflation of, of footballs, tampering with footballs, at the very least, it's a $25,000 fine. But because Bill Belichick is a repeat offender, remember Spygate, I think they're looking at a fine. They're looking at a loss of, um, of draft picks. And if I was running the NFL, I would suspend him for the Super Bowl. You, you would actually go uh, yes, for that? Yes, I would. Yeah. Uh, two things. One, if Robert Kraft, the owner, has any integrity, he'll fire him, which won't happen. Uh, but secondly, I think the league needs to come down hard. This is an integrity of the game issue, and they need to suspend him for the Super Bowl. So that's a tough thing to suggest, that if Bob Kraft had any integrity, he'd fire him, which he won't. Which means what? Bob Kraft has no integrity? Uh, let's calm this thing down a little bit. I'm sure that Bob Kraft will deal with this in due fashion when he gets all the evidence. And I'm doubting that Bob Kraft knows anything about the uh, pounds per square inch in a football. Now, the thing here is, is that the NFL has not said a word formally at all. All you're getting is source material at this point. And so until the NFL comes out with some kind of investigative conclusion statement and what really happened, jury's out. What's going to be really interesting, I think, is Belichick's got a press conference tomorrow. And I don't think the press room is big enough for all the media that are going to show up as he says, uh, Seahawks, pretty tough team, uh, doing what we can to get ready for him. Uh, uh, got a lot of talent. It's going to take our best. Uh, we're going to work real hard. Yeah, but Bob, Bill, what, what, what about the football situation? Uh, don't know really anything about it. Not cooperating with the league. Uh, that's all I have to say. Yeah, but did, 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 was it 12 pounds per square inch? Did you, did, did, did you, did, uh, no, don't really, don't have much to say about it. Seahawks, pretty tough team. Uh, you know, endure. Oh, we'll be right back on the radio, ringing the phones over a press conference where he said nothing. Uh, in the meantime, there's a rumor that the President of the United States had some prime time last night. You wouldn't know it if you were listening to radio in New England today. Uh, here's the headline. Yeah, he's getting very aggressive, interestingly enough. A little uh, rundown on the night that was. Of course, nothing helps families make ends meet like higher wages. That's why this Congress still needs to pass a law that makes sure a woman is paid the same as a man for doing the same work. It's 2015. It's time. We still need to make sure employees get the overtime they've earned. And, and everyone in this Congress who still refuses to raise the minimum wage, I say this. If you truly believe you could work full time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, try it.
Now, I actually asked Jess to pull those cuts rather than the rundown for this specific reason. That is that, that last remark, you know, gender equity in terms of pay, sure, over time, debatable. But the idea that he is trying to pump this conversation about raising a family on minimum wage is the most intellectually dishonest thing I've ever heard a president continue to drum home. It's ridiculous. Hey, Mr. President, try it on 20. Hey, try it on 25,000. You can't probably do it well on 30,000. So if you took the minimum wage from where it is now, federally, seven and change, and you made it $15 an hour, you still couldn't do it, which means we have to redefine what the minimum wage is for. And suggesting that people ought to be making babies while they're just earning the minimum wage is completely outrageous. Thank you. Now, he talked about tone and try to suggest that, you know, the bitter conversations back and forth have got to end. And, you know, he's got this casual way about him. He delivers the most casual State of the Union address that you can muster, and that might be fine. It's a populist method of communicating. But when you uh, casually say, hey, by the way, you know, and I'm not running again, so I'm pretty much a freelancer here, and you get a little bit of pushback, instead of taking the high road, you do this. I have no more campaigns to run. My only agenda, I know because I won both of them. Um, you see that smirk? That was ad lib. Listen, the whole thing on bitterness was belied by that ad lib remark. So Mr. President, save, save the speeches about behavior. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the Republicans won the election here in 2014. You may want to think about that when you're looking at policy. In the meantime, we go to the Education Commissioner's obit, and we put that in quotes because she's just fine. Uh, you saw the Projo article today, maybe, in the, in the newspaper, uh, confirming what I talked about last night and uh, the Commissioner's interest in a Tulsa, Oklahoma position. What really, really struck me were the multiple quotes like this from David Duffy, who runs the School Committee's Association here, she set high expectations that the system was forced to match. She was very good for Rhode Island. Everything that was re referred to, I mean, everything that referred to Deb Gist was in the past tense. Like she had either left or died. Which tells me that everybody knows that it was fait accompli that she was going to exit stage left. Now, she's still under contract until June. She hasn't gotten a job in Tulsa, Oklahoma quite yet. And Governor Raimondo has a chance to save this thing and keep this change agent in place. Highly unlikely, certainly when the tone is that everyone's more or less suggesting that she was pretty good. Now, in Twin River, this is funny. I told you so. Now, if you were listening to me on the radio 10 years ago, 8 years ago, 6 years ago, blah, 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 you'd hear me say that they need this. Here's the headline. Oh, in order to compete, we need a hotel. I challenged the folks at Twin River to admit that in their plan had to be, this with the blackjack tables and everything else that we approved, that they could put the whole thing on the table and talk about being more of a destination spot than just a convenience spot. Now they say, with all the competition coming in Springfield and Boston, we need to be a destination place for some. So here's the rendering of the hotel they want to make. I don't have a spiritual or philosophical problem with the idea that they need to put that in. But here's what's going to be next. They say, well, we're only going to need a couple of meeting rooms and that kind of thing. I promise you, remember I told you so, in short order, they're going to be looking for convention space and bigger hotel and all sorts of other things because that's the only way they are going to be able to compete with those that are coming in and uh, tearing up the marketplace. I'm just looking for a little straightforward forecasting and asking for what they need in the appropriate time for an election decision, by the way, on the part of the voters. We'll try to get the Twin River folks in here to have an honest conversation about that. Your state of mind is important to me, important to the rest of the audience. 228-1886 is the telephone number. You can email, you can tweet at us. Kenny posts on Facebook regarding the Vinnie Paz story the other day. Why do we put so much time in on him or put him on a pedestal? That's not very nice, Kenny. There are a lot of people that care. You know, when you're a polarizing figure, I know how that feels sometimes. <laughs> Some people just don't care, but they're not telling the truth. When we come back, someone who really did care, and she's gone. And some folks will tell you all about how great a person she was and the contribution she made. Stay with us.
Yeah, well, you saw the headline. I mean, most people who are paying attention to the challenges that Sister Ann Keefe was having with her health knew this was coming, but you, you hate it when it happens, of course. The human condition being what it is, Sister Ann Keefe, tireless champion for social injustice under the mini headline of passages. Um, here's a yeah, eyewitness news. Uh, you can't synopsize life in 50 seconds, but they tried. There's not a person in this room whose life sister Ann Keefe didn't touch. On Monday, people who knew and loved her gathered in Providence to remember her legacy. I think why people are sad today and people are feeling her loss is because with all our cynicism, we do relate to kindness in action. And she was one of the best examples we could see. Sister Ann dedicated her life to helping others, founding more than 20 organizations like the Institute for the Study and Practice of Nonviolence. People who know her tell me she fought tirelessly for many causes, like ending hunger, poverty, and homelessness, a pursuit that ended Sunday when she died of brain cancer at age 62. This whole city has lost something. Our whole state has lost something, not just those of us who had the privilege of knowing and working with her directly, but she's touched thousands and thousands of people in ways they may not even know. Uh, I'm sure you're going to add volumes uh, to that conversation. Welcome back, Tenny. Nice to have you. Thank and you. Uh, Cedric uh, works at the South Providence Recreation Center and is on the board of the institute that hired Tenny along with Sister Ann, correct? Yes, correct. I'm sorry for your loss, and I, and I know you, you feel that way because I'm sure you feel part of her family, don't you? We do. Like, like so many people do. Uh, you know, that piece is kind of interesting, I think, because you know, Cicilline, David Cicilline, former mayor, congressman, politician. Um, it didn't matter who you were. She talked to you pretty directly in, in the same way. I mean, from my limited experience with her, it was no nonsense, not abrasive, but you knew exactly what she was going to say, and she was pretty direct. Yes? You knew where she stood. So he wasn't getting anything over on her. I wasn't. You weren't. Nobody Absolutely was, right? Not. Nobody. Not, not at all. Talk to me about her. Uh, Sister Ann just had a can-do attitude, uh, like you said, no nonsense. Uh, she touched so many, so many people on so many different levels. Um, she was just an advocate, uh, a strong advocate for nonviolence, and uh, and loved her community. Um, uh, we, we just miss her spirit. Mm. Uh, She was a friend. She was like an adoptive mother. My mother passed away. And when they interviewed me, I said, I'm interviewing you. I wanted to know that I'm going to come to a place of integrity. First time I met her was at the Hot Club. As other people mentioned, I think it happened to them as well. It was a fundraiser for City Arts. She started community voting, AIDS Care Ocean State. So many. So she was involved with Sophia Academy, Open Doors. Uh, and she could really speak to a governor in a way that she, everyone knew she loved them. And at the same time, she, a lot of us in a professional class, we can talk for two hours a meeting and not get to nowhere. Right. Until Sister Ann intervenes, like, oh, practically, what are we doing? That, so you have wit, practical, and care. What a combination. Mm. No wallflower. No wallflower. But, but no, right? <laughs> no wallflower. Kind of you, like, get to it. Like, and knock it off. And by the way, if you're too big for your britches, you were going to know. Yeah. But you didn't feel like you got into a war or that you got set back. You may have comfortably settled back into your shoes when she did that to you, but th th that's a gift, isn't it? Very much what? so, yeah. When, when Sister Ann called you, or when she wanted to make a meeting with someone, um, you, you, you took the meeting, mm. and, um, and you followed her lead. And so she was just uh, just tremendous, tremendous advocate to, uh, and a good a voice for the young people and uh, in the community as well. How so? Why? Well, she, she, I, I just can recall talking to so many people that uh, Sustan so was involved with uh, St. Michael's uh, CYO basketball, and any time they, they needed anything, they called on Sister Ann. Um, from the, the Thanksgiving turkey baskets that she used to donate to the Recreation Center every, every year, um, we were always good for 10 or 15 families. Uh, so it's just those things that she, she, those small things that she never really talked about, but she just did. It seemed she like was, a boundless yeah. amount of purpose and energy that she had. Boundless. Yeah. I mean, she was sitting in an old-fashioned office in the rectory on the third floor, 
and fight for one immigrant's family. Something was, papers were missing for work. They were gone, disappeared in a transaction, a house burned down. Always, it wasn't like, oh, well, I can listen to Sheldon Winehouse and Senator Reid. No, she would work for you like you were the most important person. You felt that, whatever your issue was. And for a young executive director at the time, she would let me make mistakes. With her wisdom, she was telling me, avoid that. No, don't do that. I'm telling you do this. Instead, when you asked her for her advice, she gave it to you, but always with a room that you will have to make your mistakes. It's not her cause. As much as really, she was the power behind us. We could go and learn and make our own mistakes, and that's greatness, if, you know. So, well, under the concept of no one's irreplaceable, guess what? That's not always the case. We'll talk about how you do, and then where do you go from here when you suffer a loss in a community like this? Today. So we're talking about Sister Ann Keefe, uh, who this community lost, and I do believe this community lost. Uh, 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 oh, you can use all the words: legend, hero. Saint, Saint, <laughs> her own version, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, it's 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 a tough one uh, for you guys, but I'm sure there are a lot of laughs. Um, I'm sure she'd want you to laugh a little bit. Did you get a chance to talk to her a lot at the end? A little bit. I was respectful. There were people right. who were in hospice with her. Spent but she'd been time. up and down with the cancer battling for the last three, four, yeah. five years. So yeah. I'm sure you had some pretty philosophical conversations with her when things were not as bad, but writing was on the wall. Yeah, I feel that one thing I haven't delivered yet, in, uh, and she said it, uh, her unfinished business. One was sort of school for the environment. We are the ocean state. Wanted something to do more with the environment and the water. And, and the other thing is really nonviolence in schools. It was so obvious that she loved the street workers, but she said, we need to rely less on them. Mm. If all teachers and students and everyone learned nonviolence in schools, we would so many of the ills later and the traumas would go. And that's, I think we still owe her as a community to deliver on that. No one's irreplaceable. Wrong. Right? We're, she's going to be very, very much missed. And, and uh, just her dedication. Um, I could recall her just coming off a treatment, coming back from a treatment and going to a just going to a meeting and just we know she was we knew she was tired we, we and, and she was in pain but um, she was so dedicated to to nonviolence that um, that she didn't want to miss out on anything well and so she obviously she leaves not only legacy but she leaves learning she leaves things that you you've learned you've learned yeah. countless others have learned in the community but how do you translate how do you, how do you, the, the concept that, that nobody's irreplaceable, the human aspect of, 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 of losing such a special, special person like this, and then carrying on work that she wanted to get done, those little nooks and crannies of individual heroic work that she was doing, who fills that gap and how? I feel it's okay to know when you, you end up, you're around greatness and to praise it and to adore it and doesn't take away from us. So I'm not a starry-eyed dreamer, but I also studied from Aristotle and others. You know, sometimes you are close to someone special, and it's okay to really respect and admire them. One thing I think I will take from it, there's a few things, but this one thing that often we don't talk about is, we have find a lot of reasons why we shouldn't be working about the things we all care about, actually, together. You know, Dan York is a little bit to the right of me. I'm a bit more liberal. Sister Anne was a glue. You ended up around the table, whether it's the board of the institute, whether it's commissions, whether it's in the state house. There's a lot of people that otherwise we will all find the different excuses why you're not quite should be with me mm -hmm. and dragged us to do what we all wanted to do, which is the right thing. A unified towards the right thing. That's a beautiful thing. I think that's why a lot of people feel the grief. You know? And it was done. Don Anderson, the Council of Churches, says she was always fun to be around, even mm -hmm. it was tough battles. Uh, so I hope to try and be a bit more humorous when I'm being self-righteous fighting for causes. Just tiny reminders of to be a bit more humorous and kind to the people you with. So, I get it. You fill the gap by adjusting to her great space in your own work. Yeah. Interesting. And just Thanks. to continue, continue, just continue working and touching uh, as many people as we can uh, in, her, in her spirit, you know, I think that's important. You know, it's so true. 
there's not only a provinciality in Providence and in Rhode Island, but there's a take it really personally aspect to our politics that I've noticed is not unique here, but amplified here. And she didn't have any of that. No. Like there was, you know, rock 'em sock 'em robots, but she could go have a beer with you, right? right? Absolutely. We need more of that in the public discourse, right. do we not? Right. Absolutely. You know, there's when people say Americans are not engaged. As a foreigner, it's absolutely not true. Americans are very engaged and very passionate about this democracy. We might disagree on a lot of things, but this is an engaged society and a caring society. We strongly disagree. We need to bring more and build that middle. Uh, Ten-second summary. You'll miss most what about Sister Ann Keefe? Um, just her, just her, just go get them, huh? Just, just all of it. Right? Yeah, just just her go get them spirit. And why can't we? Why can't we hmm. make this happen? Just love being with her. I don't know. It's a strong love. It's just what a joy to be with a person that also happens to be righteous, caring. Uh, the arrangements. I'll tell you about them when we come back. By the way, the funeral mass for Sister Ann Keefe will be this Friday night at St. Michael's the Archangel, Oxford Street in Providence, and then up to Holyoke Mass back with the sisters. Uh, for an 11 a.m. memorial service on Saturday in case you want to uh, pay your respects. God bless her. She was an incredible uh, con contributor to the community, no doubt. All right, we'll see you on the radio tomorrow at noon on WPRO and back here at 730. I'm sure it'll be about football. Good night.